Okay, okay. Let's keep the camera on the hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a grin machine. Like, I, we've come back to that term, grinning. I mean, it's so hard to drive this car and not, not smile. Yeah, not smile. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2022 Daily Motor Best Car of the Year, the Hyundai Kona N. I'm Charlie. We got Chris behind the camera, and we're going to go out for a little drive and talk about what made this car our best car out of everything we drove in the year of 2022. Yes, I'm looking forward to sitting in it because it's horribly cold. Yes, Chris is freezing because his- Not a jacket and Lisa did not teach him to wear a jacket. No, she did. She did teach me, but I've just decided not to. You know what's funny? I actually brought a jacket today. I just forgot to put it on. I forgot that it's below <laughs> freezing because we were just out in Southern California and then this happened. And it's yeah. now white, but it's fitting because we have the little white Stormtrooper here. That's right. The exact same car we drove earlier this year and we are yeah. very happy for it starting it up here for those of you who are not aware of what the kona n is it is the third n product out of hyundai's lineup started with the veloster n a few years ago then they released actually this and the elantra n right about the same time and this car comes in with very little optimization or, or um, customization i should say you get one transmission option the eight speed wet dual clutch automatic meaning that it is very snappy, but also very reliable. It's not a dry clutch, which right. uh, Ford tried to do and then ruined a whole fleet's worth of Fiestas. Yes, yeah. and focuses. Mm -hmm. And under the hood, a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine with 276 horsepower and 289 pound feet of torque. Power is all sent to the front wheels via yeah. the uh, dual clutch that Charlie just talked about. Mm -hmm. And you get currently three color configurations that's right now, there used to be four there used to be a light blue color but now it's just white black or red yes three choices a lot of cars in this segment they don't really give you a lot of choice for specs so kind of consistent with all of the other vehicles that this car competes with but i am satisfied Ooh, with what you do up. get with this car because as chris just mentioned heated seats warming his behind you get single zone automatic climate control, no dual, but single zone there. You get a manual handbrake, nice little stitching there. We'll see if we can use that some today. And overall, a good amount of features for a grand total of $36,000, give or take, uh, wherever you are in the region and when you're watching this video. And I'm okay with there not being a whole bunch of customization for this car because it's pretty darn cool. And it's just a car that makes the mundane task sometimes of driving better and then it makes fun driving that much better. Yes. Let's get it into gear here and get out on the road. I am not going to spend too much time in this basic drive mode that we're in, but you do have a few Is it because drive you modes. don't want to look at the white face gauges? That is part mm -hmm. of the reason. Yes, that is one of our few. That's okay because this since this car came out, uh, the Hyundai engineers listened to Charlie and I yep. and they made they switched the gauges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so now that doesn't blind you quite as much. But it kind of fits for today because it's white outside. We have a white car and some white gauges. It's going to work. <laughs> you do have to be a little bit strategic driving a front-wheel drive car in colder weather and colder temps, but you slap some winter-type tires on a car like this, and you're going to be just fine. Also, being front-wheel drive only instead of all-wheel drive, like something like the new GR Corolla, you don't lose as much power to drivetrain loss. You can actually have more of that power working to propel you forward. And when we decide what's going to be the best car for the year out of all the cars we've driven here at Daily Motor, the way we do it is a bracket setup. We actually decide it live. I get together, Chris and I get together with the Topher, and we sit down, we have 64 of the cars we drove throughout the year, and we go through a March Madness basketball style. It's a bracket system all the way to the end, deciding on the best car that, that provides three main aspects. It needs to, we talk about how it is to drive, how it would be to live with, and how well it excels at its purpose. So when we're talking about a car like the Kona N here, I will note it is a little bit loud from these tires, but when we're talking about a car like the Kona N, how is it to drive? Well, it's a whole ton of fun. We're gonna see that here in a minute. You can see that from our full warm weather review. It's, the engine has a ton of character, something you don't really get in four cylinder motors very often, having this much fun and character in it. It's got a good driving position, driving feel, good weight to the steering. 
a lot of outright power to have fun with. Very, very good car to drive. How would it be to own? Well, it's kind of an SUV. It, it is. It's a little bit more of a hatchback, Don't but it's say that kind too of an SUV. <laughs> you have some space back here for yes. kids or adults even. You have some space in the cargo area. Yeah. You have a little and bit of extra ground clearance. Headroom. A ton of headroom. You can see I'm five foot ten sitting here. I have plenty of room. It's a car that um, this, this is, is good. good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a car that actually has some livable practicality, and it's not going to get great fuel economy, but it's not going to be awful. And it's got everything technology-wise you're going to want. We said those heated seats, easy physical controls for climate and volume, and it's got CarPlay and Android Auto. A lot of good features that you're going to want at this price point. And then, how well does it excel at its purpose? Very well. It's supposed to be a, a sporty daily driver type car. And it's so good at that because you can see we were driving it chill back there and it's just kind of going along. But then I press this end button here, actually that end button there, there and it gets loud and it gets fast. Look at that <laughs> torque steer. <laughs> that was not me trying to steer it at all. Yeah. That was it yanking me back and forth and immediately I'm met with a grin. A grin shift? Yes. <laughs> this thing is properly bonkers. <laughs> and it's just, you don't expect it from a no, package you don't. like this. No. Oh, did you say it? Oh, it's because I'm an end grid shift. It's in the most aggressive shift pattern. Uh, it's so, it's also the ride is really something as well. <laughs> it stiffens up quite a bit in end mode. And it bounces you all over like a Focus RS. It'll steer me through this corner just with the gas pedal. I don't even have to turn the wheel. Oh, the brakes are a bit wore out on this model. I had a tough Some life. Things. <laughs> Something's moving around back there. It is. I get this great digital gauge cluster here that you'll see in a moment once Chris drives, but it's telling me all sorts of fun track information there. Oil temp, engine temp, torque, turbo pressure my speed, my gear position, RPM. And then, unlike a car like the GR Corolla that doesn't give you any cool infotainment stuff, you've got your end mode screen here in the Hyundais, and look at all that. Yeah, That's, that's cool. really cool. For someone who's gonna go and actually take their car out on track, this is useful, a lap timer. How much you're pressing the brake pedal so you can watch that afterward and see how you know how far you're having to go into it. And then look how well you can customize all your things. Oh, look at this. Yeah, you can make it uh, sporty for some things like steering but not sporty for other things like suspension and exhaust sound you see your g-force readouts launch control right there which i can't imagine would be particularly useful today no yeah so a lot of really cool things and you can tell that hyundai really uh, thought through this car from a passionate standpoint you can tell that they really thought what are what are the type of people who are in this market going to want and provided that. I mean, they really did. Yeah. Yeah, this was one of the few cars... Okay, Charlie. I think the problem was no grip from the front, so we just kind of turned. <laughs> what I was trying to say before my colleague decided he wanted to use the handbrake is that this is one of the few cars that we drove last year that I drove just to drive. Like I would go right. out and just drive this car Every because night, it was you just so went much out to fun. Go for a drive. Yeah, go under tunnels, hear the pops and burbles, all those good sorts of things. Okay. I don't think it likes that too much. <laughs> I'll get you out of the snow here. Thanks. Optimal performance there. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's keep the camera on the hat. Do I have snow mode? You do. Oh, do I? You're gonna use it? Yeah. You can hear how much quieter the car got. Okay. The fact that you get power just to driving seats is pretty cool. And these seats hug you really nicely. We've had a Hyundai N product out on uh, track, Gingerman Raceway. Actually, okay. we've driven all the end products on track, and they're all quite good. Snow mode. You've been extracted. It's limiting throttle response here. <laughs> the 
Okay. Over under on that Mustang being on winters? Under. Steering tightens up so much in end mode. Yeah, it's a really dramatic change. Yeah, it is. Some of the other competitors for Car of the Year. The Ford Bronco. The Ford Bronco, another car that does provide a lot of fun and a lot of a unique driving experience on the road in this sea of mundane crossovers that we drive on a regular basis. The Bronco provided a nice change from that, but we didn't love quite as much the other versions of the Bronco and uh, other outside of the particular ones that we did like, the seven speed manual. And some of the build quality issues kind of shoot us away at the very last moment. And also they're quite expensive. They are getting yeah. other finalists. Volvo V60 cross country. The Volvo V60 again. Which I might have picked if it were up to me. Yeah, you really do get a lot of car for that money, a lot of a lot of features and a lot of a nice experience. But not maybe not quite as uh, universal and not as outstanding of a driving experience as right. this. And maybe misses its mission a little bit more. And the final finalist was the Porsche Macan S. Yeah, the Macan S, also a little similar to the Volvo, but... Oh my god, we're Actually, in soft suspension. No, you're not. Press N again. Yep, go ahead. I think you are now. Now you're in custom one, so now it should be soft oh, okay. suspension. Does it feel better? A yeah, a little bit. bit. Yeah. No grip. Yeah, let me get your traction control on. There you go. That's all I wanted. The pops and burgles aren't quite as loud on the DCT Hyundai M products as they are. But, they're, the but they still exist. They still exist. They still, exist. still quite satisfying. Yeah. Okay. Give it some pull. Feel the yank. <laughs> it's just such a grin machine. Like, I, we've come back to that term, grinning. I mean, it's so hard to drive this car and not... Not smile. Yeah, not smile. Even Alyssa drove it a little bit and was like, I liked driving that. It was a yeah. lot of fun. Oh my God, I'll never forget when we were we were sitting at the garage and Alyssa took the car home for, for whatever reason. And... I look at Charlie and I'm like, you think she'll put it into end mode? And she gets just out of sight and we hear the exhaust get loud and, we're, and you're like, yep, okay, she's in end mode. <laughs> mm. And this car seems to be holding up pretty well after 10,000 hard miles. Yeah. Still shifting great, pulling hard. Yeah. Interior is in really good shape. There's no piano blacks or anything to get scratched up. It is a bit drab of an interior. I would like if... Hyundai would add a little bit that of blue. Was our, yeah, here. I was going to say, that was our biggest complaint with this car, is that the dashboard and mm -hmm. the layout of things is a little bit boring. Yeah, a colored start-stop button would go a long way. But they do have a few little blue accents, some cross-stitching and some accents here. Got the buttons. I mean, I would just... I, I would so happily daily drive this car. Me too. Those seats get properly hot. They do, yeah. Dial mine down. Black headliner, which mm -hmm. I am an enthusiast of. You are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's got spaces for things. We drove that GR Corolla recently. A lot of cars don't have space for things, but a pretty decent center console. You could slide a phone right here, set it on the side, or there, or yeah. in your cup holders. And it's actually got wireless device charging, which is pretty cool. It does, yeah. Yeah. Some door pockets. Fewer and fewer cars these days have any semblance of soul and as we move further and further into a world of electric vehicles which don't get me wrong i like evs i really do and you can have soulful evs but having noise vibration and sensation that goes a long way in making a car enjoyable to be in and to drive and this end product is just saying nope i'm still gonna just focus on fun it also does it in such a practical and usable package that literally anyone shopping for a car under $50,000 should seriously consider this. Yeah. Yeah. It will make you enjoy having to go drive your car, even if it's to go to work, to go pick up your mother from the funeral home in a casket. You'll have more fun doing it in the Kona then.
interesting take there. Didn't know that you'd go that way. That's really the biggest thing for me. That's what matters the most to me is do I want to drive the car? Do I desire? Do I? Am I laying in bed at night thinking, why am I sleeping right now when you I could, could be out be. driving the Kona N? That's, that's fair. I don't think I slept very much the week that we had this car because yeah. I was just why constantly out driving it. Mm -hmm. You should. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do one and. One. There you go. Yeah. You can't have a manual, but you can have a, uh, you can feel like you do. That's right. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to Hyundai for making such an awesome car and for getting it to us again in order to film this video. Thank you all so much for watching Daily Motor week in and week out or day in and day out if you're really quite committed. If you're just stumbling on this, uh, thank you for watching. This is the best car of 2022. That's Chris, I'm Charlie, we're from Daily Motor and as always, pop some verbals on. And as always, Chris is cold on. <laughs> Maybe later this week. Okay. Are you shitting me? Your audio wasn't going? Mine was. That's good.